Do you know that feeling when you are learning and learning more about code and you think that you are writing some really decent code, everything seems to be working, but then as soon as you try to change something or you remove one script from the scene and you realize that the code is no longer working because all of these scripts you had were dependent on each other. If this sounds familiar to you, then let me introduce you to Uwent Pass. Uwent Pass is great because it allows classes to communicate with other classes through Uwents. So this is really similar to the workflow to which you may already be used to, which is using actions or delegates. But the main advantage of Uwent Pass is that it is centralized, so none of the classes are dependent on the other classes. By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to create two types of Uwent Buses. The first one will be using enums to identify the different types of the Uwents, and the second one will be using types, using which we will also be able to pass in our custom data between all of the different classes. And to not waste any more time, I've already created those five scripts we will be using for the enum based Uwent Bus. So first script is the one bus where we'll have all of the functionality centralized in just this one class. Then we have the player controller. So when we press the W key, it's going to level up the player. So it's going to invoke the event. And then I have those three scripts which will be listening for the event. So the first one will play some audio. The second one will spawn some particle. And the third one will show some screen effect. So first, let's take a look at the one bus script. This one is not going to be placed on any object, we don't really need it to be mono behavior. And also, we don't need to have multiple instances of the Owen bus, so we can make it static. This will make it really convenient for us to use it. I have created the Owen type enum, where right now I have only the player level up Owen, but later you can add as many more as you want. For the Owen bus, we will really need only those three functions, and all of these are public and static, so that we can simply call them from literally anywhere. The first function is the raise, which is going to trigger or just raise the event. For this, we only need to know the type of the event we want to raise. And then the other classes will be subscribing or unsubscribing to the event. So for this, again, we need the event type. And we also need some actions so that we know what should happen when the event is raised. And when some class subscribes to some event, we should also be storing that somewhere so that when we raise the event, we know what kind of actions we should call. So for this I have the private static dictionary, which is storing the event type as the key and the action as the value. So these are all of the assigned actions. Then when we raise the event, we are going to try to get the value for the event type as for the event we are trying to raise. And if the action for that event exists, we are simply going to invoke it. When we are subscribing to the event, this is also really straightforward. We should first check if we already have the key of the event type in the dictionary. If we don't have it there yet, we need to add it. So we are just assigning the action to the key in the dictionary. And if there already is the key, we can add the action to it. And finally, we have the unsubscribe function, which is going to subtract the action only if the key exists in the dictionary. If it doesn't, it probably means that we haven't registered it, so we don't do anything. And this is it. This is probably the simplest implementation of the one bus you could find, but already it is pretty useful for some simple scenarios where you are not planning to have too many events and you don't need any parameters to be passed into them. In that case, this is really useful. So now to use the one bus, we can go to the player controller where we should raise the event. So we will access the one bus class. We can call the raise function on it and the event type. Right now we have only one. So we'll raise the player level up event. And for those three scripts that should be subscribing or unsubscribing to the event, the code will be pretty much the same. So again, we need to access the event bus class. On enable, we typically want to subscribe to the event. And the action, you can either create an anonymous function in here, or you can assign one function that you have already created. So I will assign the on player level up function. So this is the code, it is pretty straightforward, and we have the same code for all of these three scripts. Back in Unity, I have attached all of these scripts, so the player, the screen effects scripts, the audio manager and all of that. So now when I press W, we see the level up screen effect, we are hearing the sound, seeing the particle effect and all of this is working. You may say that you could do all of this with a lot less code, which is true, but the great thing about keeping all of the codes decoupled is that now I can really remove any of these scripts, I can add them. So let's say that I remove the player controller, I can just disable it. And if I press W, nothing is happening, but I'm not getting any errors. 
And if I remove, let's say, the particle effect script, I press W. Again, everything is working, we are just not seeing the particle effect. In the case that you would not be using the ON bus, you would probably have many references to all of these scripts, and as you would remove one of them, everything else would stop working. The same way, if I want to add one more audio manager for some reason, I can just duplicate it, add it here, and then still everything is working, we have two audio managers, and we don't need to set up any references, nothing like that. Let's now take a look at the other implementation of when bus, which will be based off types. For this, I will create new script called when data, which will be the base class for all of the other when datas. The when data class, which will be common for all of the when datas, could be just empty, but in my case, I will also later be adding some cooldowns to the event, as I mentioned, so I have already added the float for that. And for the concrete implementation of the event data, I have the player level up event, which is inheriting from the event data, and additionally, it is also storing the integer for the new level, so that then we can show the text and actually tell the user which level they have reached. And finally, we have the constructor just setting the new level and the cooldown, which is just an optional parameter. Let's now take a look at the when bus class, which has changed quite a bit. First of all, I have removed the enum, because from now on, all of the events won't be differentiated by the enum, instead they will be differentiated by the type, so we have that in the dictionary. I'm also not storing simple actions, instead I'm storing delegates. We could definitely store action of type event data, but then later there could be some issues with subtracting or subscribing to the events. When we raise the event, we are simply passing in the event data, then we need to get the type of the data, and we are checking if the key is in the dictionary, if it is, we can simply invoke it. The subscribe and the unsubscribe functions are getting a bit more complicated, but still it's nothing too crazy. They are just generic, so that we can pass in really any parameter we want for the type. Well, not really any type, it has to inherit from the event data, because that's the restriction we have here. Then we are passing an action of that type. So this is the main improvement with the type based event bus. So we can actually pass in some parameters. Again, we are getting the type of the generic parameter, checking if it is in the dictionary. If it is, we can combine those two delegates. So here we are not using the plus equals. We cannot even do that with delegates. We can combine them using this function. And if the value is not yet in the dictionary, we are just assigning it. And the unsubscribe function again works pretty much the same way. It is generic, it is restricted to only take in when data. We are getting the type, checking if the type is in the dictionary. If it is, then we can remove the delegate using this function. So let's now take a look at how we can actually use the new version of the when bus. So in the player controller, we won't be using the when type, so the enum. Instead, we will need to pass in actually some instance of the when. So in this case, we'll be using the player level up went. So we can create new instance of it. We can also pass in the level, so I will create variable for that. So I'm passing the current level into the class and also the cooldown, which we'll use later. And as we are raising the went, we can simply pass in the player went. And that's it for the raising part. Then as you want to subscribe or unsubscribe from the events, still we need the function and we'll use the generic type. So in this case, we'll be using the player level up went. And because we are subscribing to the player level up event, we expect that the function is going to take it as a parameter, so let's add it here. And we can see that all of the errors are gone. Now we can do really anything we want with the data. In this case, I'm just going to set it to the text. And that's it. Now we can repeat pretty much the same process for those two classes. So just change the way that you are subscribing and unsubscribing from the events. In case of those two classes, I'm not really doing anything with the data, but we still need to add it as a parameter. Back in Unity, I didn't really need to change anything, and as he press W, we can see that the level is still showing, we hear the sound, everything is working. As we press it once more, we can see the text is updating, so it was 1, now it is 2, 3, so this is working. The only problem you may have with this version of the one bus is that you can really spam the ones as you want. If the player kills, let's say, a boss and he would gain, I don't know, 4 levels, you probably don't want all of these levels to show up at the same time, Instead, you would want to have some cooldown between each of the events. Unfortunately, this video is already quite long, so I think I will keep it for the next video, which will be on Patreon. So there you can be looking forward to customizing the one bus further, so that the events can have some cooldowns. We'll also be working on priorities of the events, so we'll have some kind of turn-based game. 
where multiple ones may execute at the same time, but then each of them will have different priority, so they will execute based on that. We also have the capability that we can have multiple ones of the same type, because right now all of the ones that have the same type are considered to be as pretty much one event. So we can see that there is a lot more interesting stuff that you can do with the one bus. But as with all of the programming patterns and the techniques, you should not be using one technique all the time, obviously it is better in some cases than in others. And for some pros and cons of the one bus, one bus is centralized so we can really make it simply fit your project because there is only one place which you need to edit. As we have seen, it's also going to decouple the code and allow you to have less dependencies. And it will also make the code more modular, flexible and scalable. For some of the disadvantages, it can be harder to debug, because events generally are not so easy to trace. And one thing that you definitely need to be careful about is calling events from other events, which can create kind of those chains, which can be hard to replicate, especially hard to debug. And if you overuse the event bus, it can also decrease the performance. This is something that I would not be too worried about, but if you overuse it, it certainly can hurt it. So when should you use a one bus? Well, definitely when decoupling the code is essential. So mainly when you expect that the code will be changing a lot, it needs to be highly modular, or you expect that it's going to be moving between different projects. So it's definitely going to fit some large modular systems. And it can also be great for some asynchronous or event-driven systems. I hope that I helped you to better understand how Owen Bus works. If you want to learn more about it, feel free to check out the Patreon video. Otherwise, I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!